The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. And he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm thinking maybe it's time for an 8, 10, and 11. I mean, 8, 10, and 12, right? <laughs> Just throw an extra mass in next year. Uh, wow, what a, what a wonderful feast. And, and just, just the idea that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and we've been baptized not only into his death, but into his resurrection as well. And so we can look into the past for what he did to take away our sins, and we can look into the future for what he did in the resurrection so that we can walk even now in newness of life. A whole new reality is open for us. There was this family coming to church on Easter Sunday. They were coming to the 11 o'clock mass and they had some kids in the car and the one child asked the mom and the dad, just out of curiosity, as kids do, thought, what were the first words Jesus said when he woke up, when he rose up out of the grave? What did he say in that tomb? What did he say as he appeared again? And the parents thought, in all our years of catechism, we've never even heard that. We don't know. And so when they got to the church, they went to the priest and they asked the priest. That was back when priests knew more than they know now. And the priest said the same thing. He said, you know, even in seminary, I've never actually heard in the tomb, what, what did he say there? And so they went to the Monsignor, the pastor of the church, and they asked him, and same thing. He didn't have any idea what Jesus said right there in the tomb. All the while, the little four-year-old's following along, just ready to answer the question. So they get in the car, and the four-year-old said, I know, I know what Jesus said when he got up in the tomb. And the parents were kind of amused by that. No one else knew, and yet this four-year-old knew. And so kind of amused, they kind of laughed a little and said, Okay, honey, uh, tell us, what did Jesus say? Uh, when he rose in the tomb. And the four-year-old said, Ta-da! <laughs> I used to laugh at that too. But I was thinking last night, that's probably what he did. <laughs> he probably did that because that's how it is now. It's, it's like that good now. And so the disciples... They gave up everything. They gave up everything and followed Jesus. They were with him through all his teaching. They were with him through all his miracles and through all that he's doing. They were all in. And when Jesus was arrested, uh, they were all fearful. They betrayed him. They were doubting him. They ran away. There was no one left with him. They felt ashamed. And so they were locked in a room, afraid that what happened to Jesus might happen to them. They too might be killed. They too might be tortured. And so they hid out of fear and out of shame. And until they saw the Lord, they viewed the world just like everyone else. Their central reality was the system is all powerful and I and you are powerless. And so when they saw the Lord, they unlocked the doors. 
They went out into the world and they turned the world upside down. The disciples were converted. They now knew a new, a new other reality. That one was truer. It was stronger. It was greater. It was something other than this reality that they had experienced before that led to this fear and paralysis and they were behind locked doors. The new reality, the truer reality they now knew, Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And we too are behind locked doors for fear. We too are afraid and lock ourselves behind these doors. And Jesus wants you to know that he knows your fears. And he wants you to know his resurrection. He says, go tell my disciples that I am risen from the dead and I go ahead of them as they go out into the world and tell and he names every one of you. Every one of you he names and he says, tell them they don't have to be afraid any more. There's a new reality. Just like Peter was afraid, we too have betrayed our Lord Jesus out of fear. But our Lord did not condemn Peter, but forgive him for his betrayal and for his fear. And just like uh, Peter, he forgives us as well. And just like Thomas, we're full of doubt, we're full of skepticism and cynicism, and we're faithless in our world. And Jesus, like he did to Peter, says, look at my hands. Put your hand in my side. Reach out. Touch me. There is, what? A new reality. Don't doubt any longer. Only believe. Be filled with faith. And so if we look back, like we said, looking back, the, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ is all about our sins being forgiven, our fears being forgiven, and we're set free. It's all about our doubts being forgiven. But now we look forward to, because of the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus is something else. It looks forward, and it says, Jesus has victory over all this sin and fear and doubt. Jesus has set us free. We now live in a new reality in which Jesus shows, Jesus shows all his disciples and you and me that there are no bounds to the love that he has for you and for the world. There are no bounds. Love has conquered death. And this is our Easter faith. It's our faith. It's a whole nother reality. We do away with that reality where the system's all powerful and we're powerless, and we embrace one truer, stronger, greater, one with a more compelling authority that tells us Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is Lord. This is our new reality, and this is our faith. And what a wonderful faith we have.